Welcome to the IVM Podcast Network. Time to talk travel stories and to talk you through travel stories without making a mistake. The one and only Ambika and Hoshna. Yes, their relationship is not approved by me, but their stories are. Check out new episodes on our IVM Podcast apps. Happy listening, mother f- and fathers. <laughs> All right, please note that the language and ideas presented on the show might not be suitable for everyone. If you're under 18, make sure your mom isn't around. If you're over 80, why is your mom around? You're listening to Cyrus Says. As a young man, he spoke to Kofi Annan's picture. Kofi Annan's picture didn't speak back. Rishabh said, enough is enough. I'll form my own United Nations and heal the world. This is one man's story. From riches to more riches. Rishabh, also from Alba Hill on Cyrus Says. Why follow your auntie's advice when you can follow Cyrus Says on Facebook and Twitter to stay updated about the latest shows? See, I don't understand people who don't carry sunglasses. On Cyrus Says, I have to tell you that if you don't carry sunglasses in a tropical country like India, you suck. I know it's rainy time at the moment at this time of recording, but the fact of the matter is the sun is always there to attack us and take revenge. Carry your sunglasses wherever you go. In fact, I tell you that for Indians and for tropical countries, sunglasses are more important than clothes. Don't wear clothes. Clothes make no sense to me. It's too hot. But wear sunglasses. You can wear them everywhere. It's called Cyrus Says. And that's what Cyrus Says. All right, uh, Cyrus says, we're meeting a good friend of mine, Rishabh Shah. Uh, Rishabh has a very interesting uh, story. And his story is that he's decided to change the system from inside. Now, you might think he's a doctor who's working on somebody's body parts, but that is not exactly what he does. He wants to change the system as far as uh, the country and society and perhaps the world goes because he is the head of the IMUN, which is... Which is the Indian International Model UN. So it's basically a Model UN organization. Which mimics, in a sense, the United Nations. Correct. Right. So, Rishabh, welcome to the show. I've got so many things to talk to you about. But what people don't know is that we know each other. We're going to pretend we don't know each other <laughs> while we're talking. And I'm going to quickly go through your bio data because uh, which, which I'm glad to finish. Well, I'm, so, <laughs> see, all great, all great people, famous people, they have only five, six lines. But the others, let me tell you, I've, I've anchored so many shows. Where, hello. And this is Ajit uh, Vikas, who is a great man. And then 16 pages about Ajit Vikas. From first standard to 25th standard Including his double MBAs and where he's worked <laughs> Just came back from Nepal from a brand fest Every biodata was 14 pages long Wow! I could have done wow. the, the conference on my own Just that, reading out the biodata That happens when we invite guests Who don't have, uh, yeah, who don't have a background I, I, I don't want to be rude to them But uh, don't people realise that you're going to actually read that out <laughs> and, and hence it should be sort of Not make them look, you know I don't know. I just don't understand. But let's let's look at this. You've given us very little. Brought up, born and brought up in Mumbai in 1991. What the hell does that mean? Okay, schooling. Means, school, means I'm young. Yeah, uh. fair enough. Schooling, green lawns, and cathedrals. So simultaneously, two schools. College, HR. They, thank God, they only threw one. Me out of one, so I went to the other. Okay. <laughs> Formally, have degrees in accounts, finance, and law, which means you're overqualified, unnecessary. International chess and water polo player. We'll come back to all these things. And of course, MUN, Model United Nations, started in grade seven, 14 years back, and you've done over 300 conventions of MUN. Okay, former youth director, Indian Federation of United Nations Association. What is that and how is it different? We'll find out. Also founder and president for life of IIMUN. <laughs> now in 108 <laughs> cities across 16 countries. Right. It's hugely interesting. We'll start with the slightly more minute details. So uh, born and brought up in Mumbai in 1991. We went to school and then 14 years ago, how did this happen? So what basically happened was that I was in um, school, I was in class and I was not paying attention to my history teacher. As one should. Uh, and, and? And I kind of dozed off, to be really honest. So You actually slept? Yeah, I actually slept through. Do you remember what the subject was? Uh, no. Huh? It was history, so then... Please don't say the Maratha Wars or something, we'll get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Just think properly, think properly, yeah. So something about World War Two, and I went, went off Who was sleep. winning at that point? I have no idea. Probably, I, I wasn't there. Okay, Were fair you enough. There? I love World War <laughs> I, I would never see for World War Two. I got to tell you. Huh, then? Huh, so then what happened is, uh, so I went to sleep and then the teacher um, caught me saying, um, he's been dozing off as usual. Mm-hmm. This was the second, third class in school. And uh, she said, um, we've given you admission in the wrong school, etc., etc. And uh, this is very bad. And now I'm going to give you um, a special opportunity. And I thought, obviously, this doesn't sound good. Um, she, one-on-one sessions with uh, <laughs> some creepy teacher. <laughs> is it a bad story? No, no, it's not a bad story. It's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing like that. So she had these big, huge glasses. She took out those glasses and said, "Cheers." <laughs> no, Cyrus, not those kind of glasses. <laughs> Go on. And 
and then after she's like uh, i'm giving you this opportunity you've got to go and uh, represent the school in this competition which is an mun so she she was explaining something about the world war the un and then she asked me so what do you understand by mun so that was my first question that she ever asked okay. me about mun badly spelled mom <laughs> <laughs> it was funny yeah? so yeah. i i so I actually said it's a modeling competition for something wow. called the UN and from so, where to where you had absolutely no idea huh so I had no idea whatsoever and you thought they said you for modeling competition Mr Millen Soman <laughs> <laughs> look were you so, trying to be cheeky you actually had uh, no idea no I swear I didn't have any idea and she said it's a model so at first I asked her what is MUN stand for she so she said obviously you're sleeping so it's model UN so what do you understand by it so I had very little knowledge it was grade 7 and at grade 7 you don't understand what the UN or the Indian Parliament or anything is for them right, right. So uh, I said some modeling competition for the UN so she said chalo now she called up my parents and said uh, this boy deserves to come specifically to Delhi for a competition where and he's done phenomenally well and you know how gujarati parents are right huh. like so my parents are like wow, wow well done well done bit. you have uh, to go huh most haru chance uh-huh. this that etc and uh, she's like oh she was taking the mickey out of you she actually thought this is a way to turn you around she thought this is a way to turn me around uh, what, what she eventually can we say said? the teacher's name miss banerji miss banerji well done <laughs> well done miss banerji because you You changed him from a what is the saying from an ugly duckling to a beautiful swan. <laughs> really? <laughs> if, if it appears to be too gay, then just tell me. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, back again. Fine. Back so, again. So, so, yeah, so this was she. She got me to go and represent this. You must, this but you must have been worried, right? Because you had no interest in this subject. Am I right? I had no idea. So my topic was something. The, the country that she gave me was Sudan. And uh, oh was, my god, <laughs> not exactly something yeah. you grew up uh, learning about. Fair enough. So which is and the topic was something about Sudan. Did you know anything? In, about sudan there is one thing that i didn't know which was the committee the i saw it, you get a committee you get a country and right. you need to uh, debate that as what happens in a competition you debate for the country you debate for the country so you're almost like a sudanese diplomat absolutely okay so um, i didn't know anything do they have diplomats i'm so sorry if anyone <laughs> from sudan is listening that was that's unnecessary yeah so yeah so, uh, so you're in delhi went to delhi you prepared i prepared um i prepared very little i um, she gave me a couple of papers what did your parents say they must be caught off guard about the where did this come from rishab lives in our house but where is this love for sudan and and diplomacy and this kind of thing so they somehow were mesmerized at the fact that i must have done something extraordinary and i wanted to keep it that way only so i said chalo so everybody's feeling good so let's go absolutely good. yeah yeah and uh, boarded the flight went out there she told me there are 30 odd people so i hated public speaking back then mm-hmm. and she told me there are 30 people in this room it happened to be the general assembly plenary now mm. later on when in life so this really what is the general assembly plenary so it's basically a committee room and uh, the general assembly is like the largest body of the un right and all the countries are represented in that so i had very little knowledge saying that all the countries meaning 193 countries uh, and she told me there are 30 people but what she meant actually was 193 countries represented by two Th- people each oh so there were 300 plus people so almost 400 people Uh, uh, okay at a time and and so i went inside and i obviously thought this is the wrong room so i went to her and said ma'am this is the wrong room so she again took off her glasses and she had really huge glasses and really <laughs> admire <Oops>. but <laughs> the only thing she took off her glasses and said uh, you know uh, darling i'm sorry but uh, i forgot the zero uh, and uh, i was like um, So I was for a couple of minutes I was uh, shell shocked I didn't know what to do she <laughs> too too young to drink you could, there's no option there's no medication available so you turn back and go into the room I went inside the room and like uh, they say you sink or swim it was sink or swim moment absolutely and no public speaking no interest in all that no diplomacy uh, kind of thing uh, background uh, no interest in world politics no interest in healing the world no uh, none of that nothing. just a, nothing. another kid from malba hill who's sleeping through school thinking you know of, of girls and whatever you think of when you're that age and then you suddenly enter and there are 400 kids all out to get you because you're representing only one country that's right everybody's representing their own yeah that's right and then what happened is that there were students from different parts and very few schools mun so then yeah. there had students from harvard and oxford and all of these oh, wow. so we didn't have like age brackets like now you have you know like the 7th to 12th grade in one one right, region right. so everybody from grade 7 to grade 15 was together what is grade 15 Grade fifteen is college. Oh, okay, I, I thought if you fail grade ten many times, you know, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Huh. So your seventh, you're amongst the younger. Am I right? I was the youngest. Okay, and so when there, the chair called out uh, my name, saying that you need to come up and speak. So your I, name, as in from Sudan? Yeah, like saying that no, you're like yeah, it's from Sudan. Hmm. Come up and speak, type of a thing, and. Uh, How uh, many Rishabh Shahs are there from Sudan? <laughs> Perhaps three or four. <laughs> 
So in that committee, unfortunately, there was only one. How long do you get to speak, Rishabh? Like, like do, a any, minute and a half. That's it. That's it. But um, what is your? Do you have a plea or something? Is there some case you're putting forward? Yes, yeah, so you're representing the country. So, like you rightly said, so if you're India, you represent Modi ji. Hmm. Uh, if you are United States, you represent Trump. Uh, but what what is the agenda? There must be agenda, right? Correct. And then there's one topic. Like it has to be real agenda. I'm presuming. Yes, yeah, a real agenda. Okay. So the agenda is something like, say, for example, so what was it for you? So my topic was Sudan. So that was the thing. And the agenda was Sudan. Which was what? The Sudan, Money? The, the, Sudan, the Sudan crisis. Okay. So, and which is why? Which is the civil war. The civil war. Okay. So, that was the topic. You know, only you and I know about <laughs> the civil war outside Sudan. Yeah. So, which is why? So, I was the country in question. And okay. So, then they asked me to come up and speak, obviously. Right. And my teacher had given me one page, uh, a speech of a minute and a half and said that, uh, Rata Karlo and then go up and speak. Hmm. And uh, so, my turn came, try to hide as much as possible. Eventually, the guy who was sitting next to me was a smart, wise ass. So, you get a placard, like a piece of paper that you have to hold up, uh, just like in parliament. They, mm-hmm. they raise their hand. So, you raise this piece of paper. So, I had kept my piece of paper below, uh, uh, below my chair. And hmm. I sat on the chair hmm. and um, then this guy saw the yes coming out he said dude this guy is only the delegate so I got caught eventually had to go up and speak hmm. um, turn came spoke um, do they ask you questions as well he, they do oh boy they huh. do. so I started reading and now my teacher didn't give me any formal training in how to speak right in terms of um, like there's a particular procedure like a particular order in which you need to speak so di- she didn't tell me anything about that what happened eventually is I started by saying, Hi, my name is Rishabh and I'm the delegate of so-and-so. Hmm. Now, as it so happens, uh, the committee, whenever you say any anything wrong, they raise their hand and they say that this guy is saying something wrong. So, they raise their placard and say that. So, now you were in grade 7, imagine, and you've got kids who are in 14 and 15. So and they start of picking on you in a sense. They start picking on me and uh, which is why, uh, obviously, I was grade 7. So, and I... So, you literally were like Sudan. Uh, you're, you're isolated, <laughs> you're on your own, you're getting bullied and, they, and there's no respect and, and there's no uh, sensitivity actually to, right. to the whole issue. So, they didn't let you carry on? So, they didn't let me carry on. So, they interrupted me for like 10, 15 times and eventually, midway, I had lost track and then I started crying. Huh. Uh, so, I was in grade 7. We have footage. So. <laughs> Can we hear some crying and pretend it's real? Yeah, go on. And then after, so, you actually cried in front of all these 300 delegates of different ages and all that. But And no mercy. Nobody stopped and said, hey, help this guy off or whatever. But it's a competition, right? So, so you kill or be killed. Correct. And so then I went out and went to my faculty advisor, told her saying that, ma'am, this is obviously you made the wrong decision. Huh. And uh, the principal in school. So then I cried and then, huh. you know, Gujarati parents again said, that, huh? <laughs> we'll change the school. <laughs> <laughs> so then that is why they said saying that, uh, get him back home on the first. What flight. a story this is. huh? Uh, and good I'm saying this on, on the podcast yeah, the yeah, yeah. And, uh, So I called the principal up Like the teacher called the principal up And said that this boy wants to come back And mm. the principal's like a uh, little bit of Adolf Hitler mm. And uh, Mrs. Bajaj uh, Kiran Bajaj she's been there since like 25 years I of think school. Now that you've mentioned her in the same breath As <laughs> esteemed colleague I don't know how that's going to work out but Go on uh, so, but No but I mean with all so, you, so, so that's it They pull you out of the competition Or you go back the next day I went back the next day So because oh, That's they didn't, great They didn't allow That's me like to after come. an accident When you go back into the car And drive it again That's fantastic And And so she asked me to um, Go up and speak again But this time she went to the judge That is the chair The right. person who's adjudicating hmm. And said that Whenever this boy speaks Whatever rubbish he speaks uh, Give him a make, chance Yeah give him a chance And let him sta- stand up And start clapping yeah. So what eventually happened Is they made me speak about Rahul Ravid Because they asked me saying, What do you like What the hell <laughs> so I was like, what the like, hell? <laughs> the boy goes to solve the Sudan crisis and he starts crying. So they say, okay, fine, talk cricket. This is a typical Indian story. Really, what the hell? Rishabh, fraud, fraud, I call fraud. What nonsense, yaar. No, From where to where? So what happened to Sudan? Sudan is thinking that Rahul Dhawan is amongst the best batsmen of his generation. He doesn't need your help. That's, 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 uh, so it was easier to talk. So then you could just go extempore because of this subject close to your heart. Correct. And then eventually, so at the end of that. But what about the non Indians who don't know anything about cricket and Rahul Dhawan? Well, they just have to listen. They had to listen because the teacher went in and put in a special request saying that the they must be screaming Sudan please we don't care <laughs> we won't interrupt him yeah so but that was a success in a way yes you ha- kept your head high 
and then the kid stood up because the judge stood up yeah. and then so that that's a good feeling so you got your you tasted blood for the first time and people clapped and uh, am i right something like that no no it's important but we have to understand uh, exactly how this turnaround came something. from a guy who's not interested to suddenly realize that a he can speak uh, b he can speak almost extempore because it's not like you prepared right. and uh, thirdly you got a taste of this whole world politics which you never looked at which is fundamentally one of the reasons why i'm on star it's like michael phelps hating swimming or something not to say <laughs> that you're the greatest uh, statesman of your time but who knows one day you might just get into mainstream um okay interesting Mainst- nothing mainstream but yeah so you yeah. know in your 20s brother there's no politician in his 20s who's actually mainstream the young youth in politics is 40s um, i don't want to mention the congress's position right now but yes 40s uh let's move on so 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 that was your formal introduction now let's understand what rishabh is thinking when he comes back he's still what 14 or something that's right okay you come back that's home right. now but you had a, it's a mixed bag right you had that terrible moment then you were able to turn it around or whatever right. but where, where was the idea that that maybe uh, this united nations appeals to me so when i came back i kind of figured that i can start speaking like i started speaking from Did you start speaking publicly and at home also daddy <laughs> unya <laughs> no, i'm just no, some no. people behave like that wherever they go yeah. never to daddy ever yeah. like that yeah. Yeah. unya <laughs> unya will be given to you but not where you want it <laughs> sorry yeah ha so so I went on from there and then participated in more competitions and the school kind of uh, so you became a debater is what you're saying became a debater you you found that part of your personality but uh, uh, getting back to the whole idea of united nations right was it a appealing to you at all yes of course and because at the end of the day what happens is there are so many people who come together from different countries understanding different perspectives at when you're in your 8th 9th and 10th there's very little that you know about sudan for but did you listen to those guys speak the yes. others and, yes. and did it hit you and say oh wait a minute i didn't even know that this was happening there or that conflict was there or this poverty issue is there i didn't even know the few countries that were <laughs> telling me i still don't know <laughs> sometimes i like to just look at an atlas and say what country <laughs> yeah so, countries like sierra leone countries like madagascar all these countries which you don't because you were born pre the madagascar series every kid knows madagascar before they know america now yeah so so eventually so it was an eye opener sorry it was an eye opener yes okay and uh, it did help in discovering a little part of me wherein i kind of figured that saying that as much as you travel to your france and your uk and us and the world is not only about seven this. western countries and yeah. the same five cities we were forced to go to for shopping <laughs> but you must not abandon them in your quest to be shallow i am no yes <laughs> all right rishab uh, let's move it along because we have only so much time i need to get sure, get sure, everything sure, in sure, so um we have to take a quick break then we'll come back we have to talk about everything Duh. In, in we have 15 or 20 minutes so please you have to talk faster that, when that, we come back that, that. and i also have to find out why you play water polo when we come back with rishab shah hi i am amit verma the host of the weekly podcast the scene and the unseen in my show i examine the scene effects and the unintended consequences of public policy and private action i show how policies meant to help the poor often end up hurting the poor I've done episodes so far on demonetization, GST, surgical strikes, immigration and MRP and I will continue my forensic assault on the truth in the weeks to come. Catch the show every Monday on the IVM podcast app or any other podcasting app that you prefer or visit seenunseen.in for all the latest updates. Okay here with Rishabh uh, Rishabh had a very interesting journey for a man or rather a boy not interested in what was going on in class who suddenly coming back and then slowly pioneering a movement of which he is now almost like the face of the brand uh tell us very quickly about international chess and water polo before i get back into the mun thing all right what was that you, what does international chess mean you played it, national level tournaments yeah played for the country what uh, are you saying freak accident while playing cricket yeah. uh, again paranoid parents gujarati family which is why i said you hurt something you know, yeah i hurt my foot um had a flat foot there was no t20 so there was no future which is why <laughs> there no ru- no runners allowed no <laughs> <laughs> see the risk is never run between the wickets so no runners allowed that's that's the problem i just killed it it's a middle class game bro we can't do anything now then so that's why they said do something else you moved to chess moved to chess but what do you mean by you played for the country so, what is fid no no so then played local state uh, national and then went on to play national so played with the likes of anand kalsan etc you kidding so it was nice it was you're fun. joking no, no, you nice. played with kalsan and anand yes i trained with them you're kidding me I have much more respect for you now. Are you serious? I'm very serious. Play respect music please. <laughs> Did you play with Carlson? Yes, that's right. You played you sat across the table. That's right. And with Are you held your own with with Anand? That's right. For how long? 
So with Anand, I played an individual game. When, so one of the tournaments that was only for twenty or twenty-five. But then there was a simul simultaneous chess game that was going on. That, there I played for forty-five to an hour. So uh, sure, you're pretty good, bro. No, no, I used to be good. Uh, now I'm pretty. Will rusted. you teach my son? Because he's he won his school <laughs> tournament, but he wants to get better. Whenever, whenever, yeah, anything so for you. Lies. Anything for his fine time. <laughs> trying to solve Sudan crisis, which is going to help my little crisis. Yeah, that's okay. amazing. Okay. I didn't know that. Okay. I mean, just to sit across on Anand or a Kalsan, I mean, that's something. Yeah, it was nice back then. And, and and for some time to stay in the game. I'm only. I mean, that's that's a lot of respect. That's <laughs> excellent, bro. Right. Long time back. So you're nationally ranked chess player. That's right. Used to be. Why did you give it up? Didn't find it as appealing. What's oh, a fantastic? I love chess. What are you saying? It is a very nice hobby, but to continue it and pursue it as your profession is something that is difficult. So the profession then goes into the dhanda, which is the profession, the corporate world. Uh, that so the lower of the corporate world cut off your chances of actually. You think you could have ever beaten Anand? I don't know. I don't tell think the so. truth. It'd be far fetched. I'd have to train. Did you feel out of? Uh, Do you feel out of depth? Uh, what is Carlson like? Is he very aggressive? He's as a person not at all aggressive. No, I mean on 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 the of board. Of course, he's very very. He's trying to psych you out. Yes, and, he's, and he plays fast. Really fast. Uh, faster than Anand. Faster than Anand. Amazing. Uh, how are you? Very slow in comparison. Oh, but that's good. You know, I always think is even in boxing, a defensive style is always good against a very aggressive style. It's when the two styles are similar that one of the the better guy just wins easily. Which is why they always won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but, yeah, but so you said you were defensive, which is interesting. That's right. Because this is a whole movement in the last few years. I've noticed of faster players and more aggressive players, and really, really just trying to go for the kill from the beginning. Amazing, uh, oh, we have a lot of respect, man. Thank this immune thing was okay, yeah, but this is huge, <laughs> huge. Just turn it around. All right, let's get back. Right. So uh, now, what I really want to see, I've worked with you. I've seen right. you at your best, and this Worst. organization that you're running. Right. Yeah, you can be modest about it. Fair enough. But the organization you're running, and that too for a teenager, because you were a teenager then. Right. I mean, it's almost incredible that you did that. Thank you. So tell us A how it started right. and B somebody guides you I mean how does a 16 17 year old suddenly become like you, a, don't be modest you guide me yeah <laughs> and the joker you need to kill time and the other guys haven't come no, that's no, a different no, story no, no, altogether no, no, no. that's when you interview me so go go back now and tell us so you you're back in school you 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 suddenly interested in this whole united nations thing where did this whole model united nations and right. im un come from so school gave us an opportunity again to travel to different places so got slightly better at it and then the younger kids were not interested so they had to send kids to represent the school and then college different competitions so you know started you sank your teeth into this and you started attending all the yes. as a competitor as a competitor and as a contestant you started getting better and better am i right that's right something okay. like that and uh, what what was the next country just if you could remember i mean i'm sure you've done so many do you remember following on from france, sudan france which must have been a <laughs> different experience because you already know a lot etc yeah and then every time you represent a country it's a different experience because sometimes you're france sometimes how do you, how much do you get into it in terms of in terms of before you get on that dais and start talking and uh, you know pushing the agenda how yeah how much do you research, research how much do you get into it so you research about the government you research about their policy their lifestyle their culture the their ladies <laughs> that part kripaya dhyan dijiye rishab is recently married and doesn't research the ladies anymore <laughs> So, uh, so basically, research you get to know. So, coming coming back to the part where in in school, so went for these competitions. They sent me to Harvard for a model U and went out there, wow. which was good. And uh, how did you do? I didn't fairly well. Which I finished, country? I finished third. Which country? So I was an NGO. You never represent India. No, I didn't. You were an NGO. I was India. In <laughs> Oh, should I say Bangladesh? <laughs> huh. So, uh, which is why then went there, then went to Hague for a model UN competition wow. out there. All this as a participant. All this as a participant. Excellent. Then, so now obviously your 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 personality is growing uh, along with somewhat. this sort of uh, movement that's happening, and you're somewhat. also feeling far more confident. Somewhat. Hmm. And after that, uh, basically went to these competitions, went and judged. Then after that, and then went to so went and judged to Australia and a couple. You of became places. Justice Chaudhary in no time. And no, no, but Justice Chaudhary out here is very in all the competitions. A younger Justice Chaudhary, so which is why, uh, like the judges. So the judge is the person who decides whose debate is better. That's right. All right. And they usually in their twenties. So by. The t- <laughs> <laughs> I like this. The world would be a better place if all the young people actually ran it. I, I really think so. Yeah, that's oh. very sweet oh. view. So then eventually. What happened is that uh, I got a chance to be a judge at a younger age, and after that went to college. Dr. Shani was there. She uh, she said, "Why don't you do something?" It's fantastic, Dr. Shani. I uh, I've also worked, done a few HR uh, moments or events, right. things like that. Right. Although post uh, being in college myself, right. I must say she's a kind of dynamic person who pushes agendas. Yeah, understand? Uh, you're very good for your education. Let's give her a plug, Dr. Shani. Then. 
then after which uh, she so she encouraged so, me to uh, so again you found a benefactor who was a mentor sort of who helped you with uh, this right. this direction then and then she helped me set up HRME one so and we did HRME one in college and uh, she asked me to lead it in comparison to seniors etc so I got the leadership experience from there mm. and said that um, so got the whole college together running and then so uh, despite not being a Sindhi who <laughs> led something in HR college this is path breaking and pioneering and shows us that this country can work together this is fabulous. So, story yeah so then after uh, yeah so and so you started with HR and then it became a sort of a Mumbai movement first HR and then I South Mumbai with, movement first and then it started spreading that's right and started with IMUN after HRMUN and then uh, so gave birth to IMUN at that point in time and it seemed it was nice but did you suddenly feel it was getting out of control suddenly there were more and more people involved and all that's right but the only the idea was to do an IMUN was because India as a whole and this is this is why I keep speaking about it uh, at these various events where uh, in IMUN wherein I tell people saying that Harvard is there for the United States there's Hague for uh, Europe and we in India you to follow their procedure so back in grade 7 when I munned mm. essentially at that point in time the way that we have to study so they used to give the notes from the CIA fact book and they used to uh, make us um, basically they, they used to give us um, data and they used to give us the procedure which is a little more westernized and as compared to Indianized so, so it's, it's a little one dimensional is what you're saying that's right and our perspective is not seen that's right Right. which is why the study material is that the procedure is that the rules but are I've sent Indians everywhere to corrupt their society why, why is it not happening <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere I've sent my people I've said go there And mess it up for them Don't be on time Teach them lessons Spit here no, Not you Rishabh It's not about you <laughs> No pointing fingers at you huh. Huh. So that is why I started this predom- So that was primarily the reason Okay, so, Very quickly uh, right. What you're not telling us Is your entrepreneurial spirit here right. We've understood that you Obviously you suddenly had this vision You suddenly right. got interested There's right. a lot of sensitivity Which is there suddenly Or not suddenly Must have always been there right. Just opened up right. And suddenly you understand the world And looking right. at a holistic world And holistic problems And how we can all solve them Or at least attempt to be better people Right. But what about the organizing Because it's a, I've attended your thing The 3,000 kids 5,000 kids The kids from all over The kids from different uh, Let's say classes Without being disrespectful So how did you get All that going So basically Got schools together Went to schools Got them uh, To be interested In the idea So you'd go yourself Yeah At first I used to go myself Even now Like to the schools I could go myself Wearing that damn track pant Looking like a PT instructor Something like that (laughs) Yeah (laughs) And Which And then Slowly The Momentum gathered steam from South Bombay Then from there But uh, I want to ask you This right. is a slightly hard question right. Do you ever feel I was thinking uh, If I was a kid growing up right. It would be uncool To be part of all this And like not be interested Like you were right. Yourself right. In the 7th Wh- standard which is So how do you break that wall How do you break that barrier Which is why Instead of just doing the normal So the first time If somebody would come to my school And tell them Saying that you know what Dude you are uh, Narendra Modi Or you are Rahul Gandhi ji, Or you are whatever Whatever uh, Nobody's going to be interested So when you first go to school And you are like You are going to be Harry Potter And Hermione Granger, then people get interested. One minute. Uh, so Hold I, on I, to I, that. Rishab Shah. Wait, wait, wait. Ha, <laughs> Gujarati ma bol. Dekha. Gujarati ma bol. If you're Harry Potter, how the hell do you go from Harry bloody Potter to what? all the way to bloody United Nations Sudan? Which is which is what I'm saying. So for the first time when they get interested into this and they start debating because there are many people in grade 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 who don't know anything about debates and in fact are introverts. Correct. So to get them to speak if what I realized from my own experience is if you ask me to speak about Rahul Dravid then only First, for the first time, the I got passion. The you got to find the passion point, and then after that, you connect it and very then you good. Make the so start. basically, you just encourage them to come out of their uh, shells and then slowly show them. Okay, let's look at this. Let's look at this agenda Correct. slowly. I get it. Correct. So we start with very basic committees, which are something that students will understand. Mm-hmm. So and then after that, if you are an experienced MUN and if you understand Model UN properly, then why don't you go to the Security Council and solve the Sudan crisis and Iran and n- nuclear non-proliferation and all of that jazz? But you can't start off a seventh grader or an eighth grader kid, and that's Predominantly what we did when In um, 2011 when we started it And then even now What we've done is Now we start simulating committees Like Mahabharat etc So foreign kids Learn about Indian mythology Indian practices And so on and so forth uh, but, but I just uh, Very quickly We're running right, out of time Two right, things I need to touch right, on right. One is uh, Of course we talked right. about What's happening in Unavla Right we, uh, You know in a, in, in a few minutes right. Literally uh, But before that You just went to New York You went to right. the United Nations You took some underprivileged kids Right You took them to New York You were That's able to right. pull that off Right So you've also got these Very very big uh, Sort of dreams Or you know Things that you do In terms right. of event Right You just try to get them To be bigger and bigger Right So my uh, Do you have like a Is there a five year plan I know something is that, is that what you're trying to do Push yourself in the United Nations Can, can a model United Nations Actually participate in an actual United Nations 
Uh, fingers crossed it can what we've done right now is that we've taken these kids to the UN and done a simulation out there the idea is 5 years from now we want to make sure that every kid is touched upon not only in india but internationally i wouldn't use the word touched upon but i would <laughs> I, i would use the word connects yeah, yeah is connected and uh, basically where they understand the indian ethos of how the world should look and, and you find no class distinction people from different backgrounds after some time they all have the same sort of Absolutely. they understand that they, there's a social conscience and a sort of indian national conscience it should be and the only thing is that especially the if you look at the various classes when you go um, when 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 you talk about underprivileged students or people who are not as gifted um, when you talk to them and when you interact with them they are more and with no disrespect to the other side they are more passionate about uh, these kind of issues uh, especially the social challenges that we debate on and face at a local and a national so level actually being in the middle of a social uh, issue or being part of a thing Correct. Ma- you know makes, makes you a little more empathetic s- Sen- 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 you too. Right. For example, my issue is all about will my eyebrows join together? And at the moment, the United Nations is not taking that seriously as an issue. Not in Sudan and not here. Uh, my, by the way, Naveen, who's our producer, no interest in world politics. I try to talk to him a- anything from Arab Israel to you know what's going wrong with the mountains in Peru. No interest. But talk to him about the M word, marriage, wa, that word. He knows everything. He knows everything about marriage, wa, whatever. which is the wrong pronunciation but we won't get into no, that issue there's a topic for that also which students for drugs for, for legalization of marijuana uh which you got is, Naveen, you got, <laughs> now you talk about rahul dravid you hit the passion point that you want to get him out of his shell you hit it this is the rahul dravid no disrespect to rahul dravid this is the rahul dravid moment for naveen <laughs> So there you go so you look at the subjects you tackle very interesting because at the end of the day i think legalization of marijuana or something that students probably in grade 7 8 9 10 need not know about but as they are as they go to grade 12 and 13 and 14 if you they're not educated in the right manner any which way uh, it's going to be um, They need to know it's out there, and have to have a perspective one way or the other. Right. Richard, right. we're running out of time. Very sure. quickly, what's sure. happening in Nunavla? This is a big one. This is a big one, and uh, that's because you were there first. And the second is Wait, hold <laughs> music, music. Go on. And then, what do you call this chapter? Is the championship conference? Okay. So what happens is, is the big annual one. Is the big annual one at the end of all the smaller events that take place all across? The winners of all these competitions uh, congregate and come together in one place, which is uh, in this case Ambi Valley. And in this case, it's a once in a lifetime experience on the week. end uh, because ambi valley will not be there next year so <laughs> for no other reason uh, the, the dates are thursday friday saturday, saturday and sunday which is uh, august the 24th to the 27th 24th to the 27th but unfortunately if you've not made the cut you can't come so we're just telling you about it but you can't attend it unless you've actually won competition represented gone through the process and hence uh, find yourself there for free food all right uh, before we wind up uh, will rishab shah land up in politics i don't think so no that's not good enough say yes or no No, no, I don't think so. Like I said, no. As of now, no. No, but you come on. You're doing so much on this side. Your organizational ability is already. You know, you've shown the potential of what you can do. You, you've got a lot of support from kids, the next generation of people who are movers and shakers of our society. So why not? Because I think politics is for politicians who are. Uh, what, do you, what do you call yourself? In a way, you're a politician. You're, you're moving things <laughs> around. You're getting people to respond. I'm just helping connect the dots, and as of now, like I said, uh, doing what I'm doing is good. I'm like you said, uh, I'm very young for politics, any which way. That the, that is true. And the you'd be like a sub junior <laughs> politician amongst veterans. <laughs> but anyway, Rishab, right, we won't right. hold you to that. But I think personally, my prediction is he will one day be uh, in mainstream politics. So be nice to him if you see him on the road. <laughs> Do not challenge him to a chess match. Okay, just to show as we end the show that you're the authentic thing. Okay. I'm moving my king spawn two paces, <laughs> two spots. What's um, what's your response? I'm moving. the bishop from uh, there next to the king pawn how how can you move the bishop your, your all your pawns are up oh i thought we were in the middle of the game bloody cheat <laughs> bloody cheater i started the game with the opening you saw that boss <laughs> What's the Sicilian defense? E four C five. Okay, stop it. <laughs> That's all we have time for with Rishab. Rishab Shah, we're joking around, right. but of course he is the head of the IMUN. If you want to join, is there a website or anything to learn details? Uh, if anyone is listening, that's that's how right. do we join? It's imun dot in, and uh, you can log on to the Facebook page. So that's I'm and it's not a very difficult process. No, no, just Google double IMUN. You oh. find Iris's face first, and then mine after, <laughs> and that should be good. You just need to have interest in the world around you. That's, that's all. Right. Just interest, right? That's about it. There you go, Rishab. Thanks a lot. lot and all the best and we'll see you soon well thank you so much on a pedestal <laughs> I am me and I'm a huge fan of the indie music scene in our country a scene that's 
relatively underground, even though it sometimes speaks its head overground. But there's no shortage of talent, and I get the privilege of interviewing some of the most awesome musicians on my show. I've had the likes of Euphoria, Kirsch Kale, Hardcore, Randolph Coria. I've had singer songwriters, folk singers, electronic music producers, playback singers, rappers, fusion artists, instrumentalists, classical musicians, and so on. Whether mainstream or not, these people have chosen to release their original music, and these are the people currently shaping the direction in which our music scene is heading. Join me on my show every Monday and tune in to discover the unique talent coming out of India today. You can catch Made in India on your favorite podcasting app or our very own IVM podcast app. If you have any questions for Cyrus, write to us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Or you can send an email to whatcyrussays at gmail.com. All right, AMA time. While they're talking in the background, it's Naveen, the philosopher, and with him is Amit Doshi, who's recently discovered he has a lot of Tata shares worth crores of rupees. Amit. Man, What's the surprises question? I get on this question, uh, on this show. I had absolutely no idea I had Tata shares. All right. Uh, which football team do you like, support? Your son would be disappointed oh. to hear that your show appeals to a die-hard Manchester United fan. Boy. He hates them. My son, see, I'm a cricket guy. My father was is well, he's still here, a cricket guy. So this is the first time. You know how children rebel. So my son decided to become a football guy at some time, at some point. And I think that's urban India. Right. A lot of them went to but football all, and all EPL, La Liga. Football. Kids yeah. football right? But my son is a Liverpool fan. An out and out Liverpool fan And so now out of fear It's not that we like the Reds right. Out of fear because he cries He breaks things He goes He won't sleep He'd put the TV on at 2 in the morning on With the volume off So out of fear The whole family rallies around Liverpool and That's okay You have Liverpool And as so company. now For Flame the first Beatles. time I have a German hero For the okay. first time Jürgen Klopp <laughs> That's how you pronounce it by the way huh? But that's not particularly surprising Like generally these sports uh, things tra- travel in families, right? I mean, like once somebody becomes really deep into one thing, you watch all the matches with the same. Yeah, because time I mean, it's, you it's your families you tend to support. Yeah. But I also have always liked the little guy. You know, you sort oh. of want to support the little guy. Some people have that gene, which I guess. So, so Manu right? would be the never the yeah. guy you'd support. Exactly. Manu's got too much going for it. Everybody likes Manu. Everywhere you go, it's Manu, 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 Manu. Liverpool so, is like the third, Liverpool, club, right? No, After Liverpool Arsenal came Arsenal and Manu. Yeah. That's the third one that people. Well, uh, in that day, I would put them a little higher, but now they, I would put them more at fourth, okay. if anything. You you got Chelsea, uh, you know. You got okay. Everton at their heels. You know, there are five, six big clubs. Okay. Liverpool's right there, but right. Manu is Manu, and Manu, mm-hmm. in terms of if you look at China and yeah. Africa and um, South America, is very popular elsewhere as well. Right. Even Arsenal too, right? I mean, like, Arsenal. I Arsenal be, let's not all forget all Arsenal. Yeah, Arsenal. I, I see Arsenal yeah. stuff. Yes, like yes, yes. Everywhere. I mean, when your name starts with Arsenal, I mean, yeah, how can uh, you go wrong? Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. I'm back in college when I can't yeah. participate in this conversation. At but what kind of Mac boy doesn't like footy? The gay kind. But even a gay guy, you, you'd like the goalkeeper because he dresses well. Or something, come on. <laughs> which goalkeeper dresses well? Like, is this a different Sar, costume? Van Van like, oh, he's wearing a different color, which is nice. It okay. suits him. Right. But otherwise, no. No. But coming back to the question, uh, Liverpool. So we support Liverpool. Let's hope the EPL plays out. Not, not a bad season. They're back yeah. in the Champions Trophy. Thanks I support last Chelsea. Year, so you don't even care. <laughs> Chelsea is a cat, according to you. Move on. All right. I support FC Mumbai. Uh, yeah, right. Name two players Ranveer Kapoor. Balls, <laughs> balls, footballs, I say. Next. Hey, the goalie is my friend, Joe oh, Paul Bent. There you go. So he Shout knows out. Name. Yes. All right. He's your friend. Mumbai FC, yeah. Oh, uh, not bad, huh, for I don't like football. Huh. Next. So What's much your energy. favorite food right now? Did you have any favorite before or has it stayed the same over the years? I don't know. I think over a period, I've come to this conclusion the Indian palate, because we like spice, no? Mm. It's like uh, scotch whiskey. Okay. It's a very sophisticated palate. So the more spice you have, the more spice you want. Right. And the other foods are all inferior, actually. Mm. In terms of. That's the truth. Let's face it. I so once you have a very strong spice taste, right. you need that all the time. So I actually move more towards the southeast now. Okay. Uh, I, I like my Bangkok, my uh, you know I, I like to go towards Thai and China. Now this is not a good thing to say with them at our borders, China, uh-huh. not Thailand. Right. But uh, one thing for sure, the food. I really I, I go yeah. towards that. Area. Yeah, I like Chinese. Uh, yeah. But what's your favorite thing to eat right now? I mean, like, what is like if one you thing. had one thing to pick to eat right now? What would you pick? Well, see, I don't want to promote animal killing, so I'll not say meat. I'll say lassi. <laughs> I tell you, I just I'm a huge fan of a good sweet lassi. I can have it any time in any way. Okay. What and I find you? that it helps me kill my appetite also when I'm hungry. And actually, also. it is quite filling. You get a lot of malai. Yeah. You need the malai on top. Always yeah. tell the guy, don't give me malai. I'll come to your family and I'll take away two children. <laughs> just be frank about this. What about if you, Naveen? What's you your favorite thing? Try out good ramen in Bombay. Go to Fatty Bao. Yeah. They have some great pork ramen. 
If you want to try it out. I, I just said you don't want to promote animal, animal cream. You, you don't. I, I, oh. I love pork. Yeah. I love pork a lot. Yeah. That's P-O-R-K. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just, just kidding. Okay. Uh, Amit, do you have anything to add to the conversation? Uh, what is my favorite thing to eat? Do you like spicy? Uh, not really at all. I don't like spicy. I, I yeah, I can't think of. Uh, Sweet. No, I, I like Gujarati Parsi cuisine is no, very no, sweet. I, I, I'm, not into the sweet. I'm not really into the sweet. I don't like uh, spicy. I don't like, I don't like too much mirchi. I like spiced. I like like you know well flavored, but I don't like too much mirchi mirchi. So I mean, so uh, what you'll tell a Belpuri me- uh, wala medium? Uh, yeah, so you never go for Le- food. Then. Not even medium. I'd say like tikka sweet kam tikka. No, then the, well, that's medium. Yeah, but kam tikka is not medium. Of course, is it really? Yeah, it's medium. Sweet medium tikka. That's, that's the three that's options. The All right, okay. Unless it's Vishal Sikha Who's different altogether <laughs> And now on his own Alright uh, Yeah sir But I think uh, Favorite thing to eat right now Is um, I like this barbecue place man I, I, You tried that ah, out, So right? you You got a more western palate Yeah I guess I do Because you spend too much time in America <laughs> He doesn't have a choice Yeah uh, You got Donald Trump So where are you going to eat your barbecue now boy Brown boy Where are you going to go brown boy uh, huh? <laughs> You look barbecued yourself You think he's going to take you back Brown boy He's not going to take you back I probably don't have a choice But uh, Okay uh, What book are you currently reading Oh, I'm reading another book on Genghis Khan, which is a little silly book, but this girl called something Mathani. Okay. Her first name is Namitha. Uh, but it's a nice idea where she's basically tried to make fun and uh, it's more like an introduction to history for for children. Okay. Is you it know? a fictional or no? No, no she's added fictional story? elements, but okay. the real facts are there, so it's it's easy. It's an easy read. Have you? Uh, well, I guess you aren't. Uh, but I'll finish it today. It, uh, it's a short book. Uh, there's a really, really, really cool podcast about Genghis Khan. If you want to spend some time, yeah, with yeah, yeah. It. it's called Hardcore History. Yeah, uh, they do a seven-part series on the That's rise of the Khans. By that time, I'll, I'll conquer the rest of the known world. It's a long one. Each yeah. episode is two or three hours long, so it's a long commitment. But you will never know more about the Mongols and get a better kind of done overview of what they're doing. Is it free to download? Yes, it is. I'll do it right now. I will Can we wrap up this AMA then? All right. Last question. Yeah. Why? Yeah, I didn't answer what I'm reading. Right no, no, oh, what nobody cares. Don't cares. Right <laughs> okay. What are you reading right uh, now? It is a good book, though. I'm okay. reading a book called A Horse Walks Into a Bar by David Grossman. It's a book written in Hebrew originally, now translated in. English. And okay. it's about this one uh, night of stand-up comedy where this guy is basically breaking down in front of the audience. Mm. He's doing his bit, but also like his personal life and everything is catching up with him on the spot. So I'm like little inside the book now, not entirely, but okay. it looks like very promising because again, as a comic, I can relate to what he's doing. But is the horse underage? There's no horse in that. It's okay. just like a way of saying. You're comedy. actually answering. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay, go on. Okay. Uh, I guess if I have to put my reading right now, I'm reading. Uh, Jeez, I don't remember the name of the book. It's about the media. It's basically that's what I do. <laughs> Hugh Hefner's biography with lots uh, of nudes. So, uh, no, this is uh, so. This is about basically the role of monopolies in the existing. Uh, so basically, technology leads to monopolies formation. Uh, monopoly formation in much more. Efficient so technology ways. leads to bullying. Is what you're saying? Essentially, you have Google, which has become a monopoly. You have Facebook, which has become a Bully. monopoly. You have Bully. Uber, which is becoming a monopoly. Bully. So it's just a question of how the way that business is done today. Monopolies are much more. Ironically, I had a. I had a child in my class with a girl in my class whose name was Bully. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's a Marwani name. It, it is a popular name. All right. So here's the last question. Yeah. Why does Malabar Hill come up so many times in your podcast? Exactly. Well, can I help it? No, you can't. I, I, I didn't ask to be born there. Yeah. I didn't ask to live there. Yeah. I can't afford anything else. Yeah. And I don't want to move far away. I got old parents. I'm stuck. Which what is can universal, I do? right? What's universal? Bayandar. Exactly. <laughs> if I was born by Bayandar, I'm stuck in Bayandar. <laughs> this is the story of Indians. We're stuck where we're born. That's our karma. We can't get out. Yeah. We're stuck with our parents. We're stuck everywhere. We can't go anywhere. Our lives yeah. are useless. I don't know what to do with our lives. Yeah. No, Look at Amit. Amit went to America, came back to Malabar. Malabar. Malabar is so powerful that you go to America and you get pulled back. <laughs> and I'm stuck. Ask him where he's going to go. He works in Bayandar. We do this in car, actually, technically. Yeah. And uh, which is pretty far away from Malabar. But he goes back. I do. Nobody else would do that. They have a house here. I There's know. no house here He goes back to Malbail Exactly I spent Malbail. two hours Going back to Malabar. <laughs> you spent two hours Going back to Bhayandar Why? No, I spent one hour That's the fun part But spend less time going Why did you spend One and a half hours Coming here in the morning And Because you, I missed the train but you, Then you lied When you said you were 15 minutes away Where were you really? The train was on time But then uh, You weren't on time Alright <laughs> Alright cool I guess that's all we got Yes that's Amma for you As in Amma AMAs We'll see you soon Okay, catch us on any of the podcasting apps, please. We beg you, we need you. If you have any questions, write to us online and uh, you can mail us as well. We will answer. We have a doctor in the house called me. And that's what Cyrus says. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Sorry to say, but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun. As you can see, there's death, destruction and chaos taking place all around us. But don't you worry, food and drinks will be served shortly, and I would recommend checking out IVM Podcasts. 
to catch some of your favorite Indian podcasts. We'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over. Thank you.